Following presidents as stipulated in the Constitution, nominees to the National Land Commission were today tasked with proving to the Land and Natural Resources Committee that they are fit for the job. The first to face the committee was the nominee for the position of chair who was at pains to prove that he had no hand in illegal land dealings. From the document that has been presented to you, there yeah. um, is an assertion that uh, you, uh, Mr. Swazuri, was one of the many who invaded this, this particular parcel of land and you even planted uh, banana plants within the portion you had uh, 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 invaded. Do we have reason to be comfortable, to be at ease as Kenyans with the fact that Dr. Swazuri is the chairman of the National Land Commission of the Republic of Kenya? And what does the Musambweni incident tell us about how comfortable we should feel? That's really the question. We will follow the law, we will uh, follow the constitution, we are not going to witch hunt. It is not supposed to be a punitive uh, action simply because there's a national land commission. We shall simply invoke the law and uh, if there is dialogue, we are going to attempt uh, dialogue as the law says. Then came Dr. Tomik Konyimbi, who at times tickled the committee with his responses. All truth and nothing but the truth. And have you ever been charged in a court of law for the last three years? Mr. Mr. Chairman, thank you for that question. I'll start with the last one. Uh, with God's grace, I have never been suspected, <laughs> charged, mentioned, or convicted for any felony, misdemeanor, or crime, both in Kenya and abroad in England, where I lived for three years. <laughs> Dr. Tomik told the Commission that a lot of civic education among the public will be one of the major tasks the Commission will have to undertake in order to institute proper land reforms. We are going to have to have a, a prerequisite of massive civic education, massive campaign, massive convincing of the people that you can leave your traditional uh, areas to go to the planned settlements. He was also quick to note that resistance will be one of the major challenges the Commission will face. In line with the new laws that are now in place, vested interests, all the challenges we face, Mr. are you apprehensive? Mr. Chairman, this is a major move. The Commission, National Land Commission, will be there for only six years. But it will be dealing with impunity that was there for 68 years during the colonial period and for 49 years during the independence period. Of course there will be resistance. Of course it is important to expect resistance. Emma Mudoni Njogo from Nakuru County was tasked with explaining how land issues should be dealt with to avoid violence given that the post-election violence in Rift Valley was majorly due to land issues. Uh, you realize that we have uh, very specific uh, uh, challenges we have had in the Rift Valley uh, to an extent that uh, they, uh, we are also being told that some of the reasons why we had uh, post-election violence in the, in the Rift Valley, we had uh, uh, issues of land. As uh, a commissioner, suppose you are appointed, how would you want to tackle the issues of land in the Rift Valley? I think, unlike many other regions, I would not say that there was a, an issue of strictly historical injustices uh, at the Rift Valley. But there is a perception that some people, some groups were favored. And I think in the settlement scheme, yes, I can say that. And as a commissioner, I am aware that uh, the Land Commission has been given powers to set up a settlement fund and using those funds to purchase uh, public land, uh, land on which they can settle, landless people and squatters. And I think that is one of the ways in which we can address the injustices the perceived injustices in that area. The committee that is set to vet a total of nine nominees today grilled six of them and is set to grill another three tomorrow.